right, so um, let's move on now to the second presenter. I would like to invite Dr. Saranjit Kerr, a professor with the University of Bangsa in Malaysia, to present her research on reading performance using chromogen lenses in dyslexic children with high and low visual stress levels. Professor Dr. Saranjit Kerr completed her PhD at the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology in the UK in 1991. And since then, she's served in University of Kabangsan, Malaysia, first as a lecturer and then as associate professor before becoming professor from 2012 to, to date. She is currently the head of the Optometry and Vision Sciences program in UKM. Her main areas of research currently are in color vision, psychophysics, dyslexia, amblyopia, myopia, and vision dysfun visual dysfunction and pathology. Let us now welcome Dr. Kerr. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much for the organizing committee for inviting me uh, to share my research findings. It's a pleasure being here. Okay, uh, when I submitted my abstract, we had only uh, analyzed the data for chromogen lenses, but then now I have finished the analysis for the overlay, so I'd like to share that also with you. Okay, so. Um, the research uh, was actually conducted by uh, three of us, uh, myself, Dr. Ms. Hanin, and our postgraduate student, Ms. Rifizati, which I will have a photograph as Dr. Ms. Hanin. Yeah, so, okay, so um, first of all, we'd just like to look at what is visual stress. Huh? Visual stress is uh, the experience of an unpleasant um, visual symptoms when reading especially if you read for very long periods of time. And some of the symptoms that these people will tell you that they fatigue very easily, uh, they experience headache, migraines, uh, can't copy from the blackboard, they skip words and lines when they read, um, they, have, uh, they have to keep moving their head or their body position, um, and they read slowly, they sometimes need to track with their fingers, and they frequently rub their eyes. And this happens usually um, after an initial period of reading of about 10 minutes. Okay, so the, the symptoms uh, that they would describe to you uh, would be the print seems to jump, move on the page, uh, they seem, seem to swirl, um, whole lines of text may appear to move and you can get even white rivers uh, or letters doubling um, and uh, basically the image of the letters and the words is unstable against a white background. Okay? Just some of the example simulated uh, symptoms. Okay, now I just go back a little bit in history. Uh, the first scientific report of the use of color to assist uh, reading was that by McDonald Ritchie in 1964, and he discovered that he had a dyslexic child who could not read uh, on a white background, but when the same text is presented on a colored background, he could read well. And then in 1980, uh, Olive Mears in New Zealand also discovered the same thing, that uh, children um, who were intolerable to glare uh, seemed to uh, read better when they were helped with colored overlays. Uh, and in USA, Helen Erling in 1983 also discovered a very similar condition. Now, different terminologies have been assigned to the same um, condition. Some uh, initially it was called the scotopic sensitivity syndrome. Um, some call it the Irene syndrome, visual dyslexia, uh, Merce Irene syndrome, visual discomfort, and visual stress. I think now most people uh, tend to use the term visual stress. Okay, and there are two major mechanisms that attempt to explain visual stress. One is the magnocellular theory, and the other is the hyperexcitability theory. Now, uh, just a little bit of introduction to the uh, visual pathway. We have our um, globe up there, our eyes, um, and um, uh, signals from the retina would be transmitted through the optic nerve. They would cross over at the optic chiasm into the optic tract and go to a center which we call the lateral geniculate nucleus, LGN. <laughs> and from there, into some processing. Uh, the uh, signals will go through the optic radiation and into the primary visual cortex. Okay, now our LGN has got uh, uh, dorsal layers or the top layers are called the parvocellular layers. 
um, in which they are constitute about 80% of cells and they are small cells, mainly um, uh, involved in the processing of colour and the, do uh, and the uh, ventral or the lower layer, there are two layers called the macrocellular layers uh, which comprise about 10% of the cells and uh, they are large cells and mainly involved with movement perception. In between now, they have discovered that there is another la two layers called the corneal cellular layers, which also they think assist in color perception. Okay? Now, according to the magnocellular theory, uh, the theory hypothesizes that visual stress is actually due to a deficiency in the magnocellular uh, visual system, which is sensitive to high temporal frequency. That means uh, anything which is moving is not seen very well. Okay? So reading, as we know, involves eye movements. Uh, you have to actually move your eyes um, from word to word in order to be able to read. So in order to be a successful reader, your sequential scanning of individual letters need to be very good and for each fixation period. So because your macrocellular uh, system is actually responsible for, the, for directing focal attention, if there is any abnormality in the system, it will compromise the ability to read. Uh, and Steen, in 20, 2001, uh, has argued that uh, you can actually boost the magnocellular system performance by using yellow filters, and he claims that it can improve reading performance. Now, the second theory, which is the cortical hyperexcitability theory, uh, assumes uh, that text is actually made up of striped patterns. And these patterns will cause most problems uh, to those uh, that are strongly stimulated, uh, that, that the, the um, sorry, the spatial frequencies that strongly stimulate the uh, visual system. And these um, spatial frequencies are the medium spatial frequencies at very high contrast. And when you get high contrast, when you have black alphabets on a white paper, Right? So on the, um, a study was done by Huang et al. and they found that um, or based on neuro, uh, in neural imaging studies, there probably is an overloading of the visual cortex in people with visual stress. Um, Arnold Wilkins and his colleagues have been actually investigating the link between cortical hyperexcitability, visual stress and reading difficulties. And they suspect that the visual stress is actually caused by pattern glare, which is attributable to a hyper-excitable visual cortex. And they think that when you apply color, you can reduce the pattern of excitation and therefore reduce the distortions. Now, how does color play a part in the magnocellular system? Uh, according to the magnocellular theory, the use of color can actually boost the magnocellular activity and it has been claimed that both yellow and blue filters can help reduce visual stress and overcome reading difficulties. However, there are large individual differences in the choice of colour and therefore this theory doesn't fully explain what actually happens. Now, um, cortical excitability suggests that areas of activation in the brain uh, actually differ for different individuals and uh, that is that I think or most people think could account for the wide range of color variations which individuals select and these perceptual distortions could be elevated by covering the text with a colored filter uh, of chromaticity which is specific to the individual. So Wilkins in 2003 suggested that color filters can actually change the distribution of firing within certain areas of the visual cortex. Now Xiao et al. in 2003 um, looked at the uh, macaque cortex and he found that within V2 area there are neurons which detect differently colored ratings. And when overlays of colored lenses were used, um, it is uh, thought that the cortical activity can be rearranged so that there is uh, uh, a, so that it, you can avoid uh, local excited excitation in this hyper excitability orientation columns within the visual cortex. 
Uh, this study was done in 2015, um, and uh, the study shows that uh, in people with a visual stress, when they did MRI studies, there was no activation within um, a certain area in the brain, but when they used overlays and reading was done and MRI done at the same time, they found that there was activation in the left, middle and superior temporal gyri. So it shows that using coloured filters does cause some activation in the visual cortex. Okay? So is visual stress and dyslexia related? Actually, visual stress is not the same as dyslexia, but there are different conditions that can be comorbid. Okay? And there is recent evidence that visual stress is two to three times actually more common in dyslexics than in non-dyslexics. And this is probably because the dyslexic person has to actually visually focus more intently on the word and letters, therefore making them more vulnerable to the effects of visual stress. And therefore, it is, I think, it's more important that people who have dyslexia are actually screened for susceptibility to visual stress and provided with treatment. Um, the use of colour filters as an intervention in, to visual stress uh, has actually uh, been done for quite a while now. And because of the different theories, different coloured systems have been developed. You have the Erlen system, the Wilkins et al. system, the DRT filters, the Harris filters, and the Promagen filters. Okay? And most studies have shown that most of the coloured filters, no matter what colour filters you're using, they do help the children in improving their reading ability. <coughs> so although there are some studies that show that it is not effective, most studies show that it is effective. Okay? So if, even though it is known that dyslexic children have two to three times more stress so far, I have not been able to find from literature review any study done to determine the stress levels within the dyslexic children. So we embarked on this study. We wanted to know whether dyslexic children have different levels of stress and also whether they would benefit uh, in terms of their reading performance when using chromogen lens 2 and overlays. <coughs> So the objective was to determine the percentage of children with dyslexia having low and high visual stress and also to determine the reading performance uh, of these children with low and high uh, visual stress levels when using chromogen lens 2 and overlays. We had 25 uh, dyslexic children who participated in this study. Uh, the age range was 7 to 12 years of age. Um, and uh, they had no ocular problems or any other problems uh, other than dyslexia. So the procedure was that the children underwent a comprehensive eye examination followed by selection of the chromogen lens or the overlays and then we did a visual stress measurement after which we um, determined their reading performance. So the chromogen lens selection and the Overlay, the serial overlay selection was done based on the manual that was provided by the uh, manufacturer. The visual stress measurements were measured using the Lucid Visual Stress Screener. So it's actually a word search game with difficulty according to the participant's age and it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to finish. And we had tested, we had uh, measured the visual stress uh, without and with chromogen lenses and with overlays. Okay, so the visual stress measurement, first we had a practice phase and then we did the test phase. Okay, this is an example of the visually non-stressful screen and the visually stressful screen. Yeah. And all the results are recorded and so we just need to extract the information. Now. Okay, so the the visual stress measurement, uh, we, we divided the, the children, uh, whether they had low visual stress or, low, uh, or high visual stress um, by this method. First, we determined the mean search time in the visually non-stressful screen. Then, we determined the search time for every participant for the stressful screen. And if the stressful time for the uh, for the, if the search time for the stressful screen was more than two standard deviation away from search time in the non-visual screen, then we categorize the child as high stress group. Okay? So uh, the reading performance measurements were done uh, with Malay reading word text 
which was constructed with 20 unrelated words and then the reading performance was determined without and with chromogen lens and overlays. And the reading time is the length of time needed to finish reading the text in seconds. We also measured the reading rate, which is the time taken to read the words correctly. Okay, so this is an example of the text that we had used. And now I'll just share with you the results. Okay, so the comprehensive eye test showed that the children had normal color vision within normal limits. And when we looked at the number of children having high stress and low stress, we had 64% of children with low stress levels and 36% with high stress levels. Okay, we looked at the search time and we saw that uh, the search time for the visually stressful screen was longer than the, the visually non-stressful screen. And with the chromogen lens, the stress time was, uh, the search time was reduced, but we could not find a statistically significant difference with the chromogen lens. So it looks like when you use the chromogen lens, the search time uh, became the same whether you are using a stressful screen or a non-stressful screen. Then we divided the groups into the low stress group and the high stress group and we found that um, the low stress group um, had a shorter search time at baseline whereas the high stress group took longer time to search for the words and uh, with the chromogen lens the stress time did reduce however it was not statistically significant probably because our sample size was very small and also I think the standard deviation is quite large. We looked at the reading time uh, for the uh, low and high stress groups. We found that the reading time was much lower, uh, that means they read faster, uh, with the chromogen lens for both the groups. Again, no statistical significant difference could be achieved here. And the reading rate similarly was Faster. That means they read, they read more words per minute uh, with the chromogen lens for both the groups. We looked at the serial overlays okay, and we found the search time again to be uh, better with the, uh, with the overlays for both the groups. Similarly, the reading rate was faster and the reading time also was faster. Now then we decided to compare both the chromogen lens and the overlays and we found that there was actually not much difference uh, in the reading time with the chromogen lens and with the overlays. Okay, There was no significant difference for the high stress group and for the low stress group. Similarly, the reading rate was almost the same whether you used chromogen or overlays. Okay? So what we found was 36% of dyslexic children uh, had high visual stress as detected by the, uh, the visual, the, the lucid. And according to the British Dyslexia Association, they report that the prevalence of visual stress in people with dyslexia is around 35 to 40%. And dyslexic children with high visual stress have longer search times compared to those with the low visual stress with the lucid as seen in our study. And this finding is very similar to previous research reported by Tyrell et al. in 1995. Now, according to McKendrick and Badcock, the macrocellular deficit will cause children with high visual stress to perform poorly for the visually stressful screener compared to the visually non-stressful screener. And this is probably uh, due to the low visual motion sensitivity, which is which will impair processing of very closely spaced uh, uh, bold letters. Okay, so the greater the amount of glare, pattern glare perceived uh, with the visually stressful screen probably increases the hyper excitability of the cortical neurons. Now with the chromogen lens 2, the reading time was shorter, that means you read faster and the reading rate was higher, that means you read more words per minute, uh, but it is not statistically significant. And similar findings were obtained with the overlays. And this could be due to a very small sample size that we had, uh, we had looked at. 
So most uh, previous studies conducted showed that colour filters did improve breeding performance. Okay? So to the best of our knowledge, no study has been conducted comparing both coloured filters and spectacles and with overlays on the same population. So our study shows that it is actually more economical to use overlays as compared to chromogen lens as they are cheaper and yet similar outcome in terms of reading rate is observed. Uh, bear in mind, I have no conflict of interest in either of the products. <laughs> okay, so, in, in, so I can conclude here that chromogen lens 2 and overlays help reduce search time uh, for the visually stressful screen in dyslexic children and the chromogen lens 2 and overlays are equally effective in improving the reading rate in dyslexic children, although the results were not statistically significant. Okay, these are some of the references. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kerr, for the perfectly timed presentation. Another round of applause, yeah. Uh, so now, can I invite Dr. Kerr again to um, give Dr. Kerr a token of appreciation?